Hi, I'm Stuart Pennington with Coral Reef K, coming to you in the first video in a series documenting the design, setup, and theory behind a 75 gallon commercial frag tank. The reason we're starting this video series is we, because we as a company believe in sustainable reefing. That means protecting the reefs and the, and the oceans that we currently have because we see a high die-off rate right now. We want this hobby to be around for 10 more generations and even farther in the future. Not only that, but we want this hobby to be accessible to everyone. That means that we want you, as our local reefers, to be able to grow corals, trade, sell them and even have some sort of way of sustaining the hobby in your local communities. For that reason, we're setting up this 75 gallon frag tank system. Eventually, this will be a quarantine tank that goes into our, uh, into our warehouse and into our systems. However, we want to take you through the build and design of how we set it up initially. And that all begins with the drawing board. For me personally, I always begin drawing out my plans in a specific manner. I design the tank, the dimensions, and I figure out what I have to work with. Currently, you'll see in the background here, we have a, a 45 gallon low boy frag tank. This is what we'll be using for the main display. We have a 29 gallon Aquion typical, th uh, typical tank that you can buy at Petco. We also have a lot of cool gear that we're gonna be unboxing and doing videos on in the future. This is something that we want to do for you, all of you out in the reefing community, to make things more accessible to you. Now it's time for some cleaning. This is what the room and space where we are going to be cleaning uh, or replacing the tank looks like today. cleaning, this is what it looks like today. Now, let's actually talk about how we set up the tank, how we plan to. We consider three different pieces of setting up a tank extremely important. One, we consider livestock. Two, we consider location. And three, nutrient removal. Between these three different things, we encompass the entirety of what it is to plan out a tank, at least at a high level. Obviously down the road things will change, but as we move forward we'll make those changes as necessary. First, let's talk about livestock. When you're building a tank, you should always have a clear goal in mind of what you want to be in that tank. Livestock is super important. If you're going to just have a fish only tank, then you're going to plan differently than if you have a SPS dominant or a mixed reef, or even just softy, softy tank. So as you start to plan out, look at the requirements for each of your um, potential livestock that you want to have in that tank. For us, this being a frag system, our main goal is growth, coloration, and overall viewing quality of our corals. We will have fish in the tank, but they're, work, they're part of the workforce. They're not actually there to be beautiful or anything else. We do want to consider their health, and that is taken into consideration. So as we put this together, we're going to be having a mixed version of a tank. We're going to have acros, we'll have chalices, we'll have um, LPS, we'll have Duncans, and we'll even potentially be getting in some sun corals and trying to work those in there too, but that's still an F. And we'll also have a lot, of, a lot of our zoas in there. All of these different animals have very different lighting requirements. They have very different parameter requirements. However, if done right and with stability and planning, you can have everything in the tank. So now I'm going to leave off what we're going to do in that until we get down to nutrient removal because they're one and the same and how we're going to tackle those two. Let's talk about location. Location of your tank is extremely important. First off, do you have outlets? Do you need to install outlets? Do you have enough amperage at those outlets to be able to support your tank without cutting off power, without power outages, without tripping your breakers? All those sorts of things are really important to consider. 
you also need to consider if there's any windows. Since you guys are setting up frag tanks, and this is a commercial frag tank, we do need to disclose one thing. This will initially be set up in my home. However, when we move it to our facility after this video series, then it won't be near any kind of windows or anything like that. However, when we set it up, it is going to be next to a giant floor to ceiling window. And in that case, we do need to plan for that and how we're going to block the sunlight from getting onto the tank and interfering with all of the different parameters and lighting schedule we have. The other thing to consider with location is where in your house is it? Is it on the first floor? Is it on a cement block? Is it on the second floor? If so, you need to consider which way your studs run, not only for hanging things, like if you're going to hang lighting, but also you should always place your tank perpendicular to the struts of the house. So the boards that support the main floor need to be perpendicular to your tank for the best supporting options. Think about if it's this way, you have two struts right next to each other and your tank is going parallel to those, it has a greater possibility of really, really a bad day for you. Um, Number three is nutrient removal. Now, as we talked about before, livestock instability is extremely important for us since this is a commercial frag tank. Nutrient removal is also going to be very important to us because we heavily feed all of our coral tanks. Along with feeding the food to the, uh, to the livestock, to the animals, uh, we also feed the fish. So we need a heavy nutrient export and a heavy because we do feed heavily. So we've decided to set this system up on a Triton system. Now, you also may have heard Trident. This is not Trident. Triton system is something that's still relatively new on the market that not a lot of people have adopted yet. However, we've had some really great success with some of our tanks. The Triton system is a combination of nutrients, uh, both macro and micro and trace elements, that need to be replenished constantly. So we look at our salt water at natural levels and we see what the tanks take out of it and we replenish those levels as needed. Now, the biggest reason why we go with this is because it runs off of an extremely efficient oversized macroalgae fuge. The macroalgae fuge allows for easy maintenance in the sump as well as easy maintenance in the tank. And get this, there's no water changes whatsoever. What we do is we send off an ICP test every two, three months. And that comes back with the results of all the different parameters in our tank. They give us adjustments that we need to make. We make set adjustments. And the only time we ever have to do a water change is if in those adjustments it says to do a 10, 20, 30, 40, or 50% water change based on the size of our tank. That being said, this is an ideal system for us. What we do need to do though is we need to plan because it requires a sump that's at least 10% of your water volume, or excuse me, a refugium that's at least 10% of your water, total water volume. So in this, in this whole situation, we're looking at about a 75 gallon system. So we need a, a fuge that is at least seven and a half gallons. What we've actually ended up having is something a little bit bigger, which will even be better. And we also need to make, um, and we also need to make sure that we understand the requirements of the ketomorpha that we're going to be putting in the fuge. The growing requirements that we really need are extremely important because if that doesn't grow, there's no nutrient export, and then we have all sorts of issues. Now, once you understand those three individual spots, it's time to start designing the tank. We have some really fun things in preview for you guys. So just to start that out, we have our 45 gallon frag tank. We actually have a custom stand being shipped to us currently. It's in the mail and in transit. The stand is all extruded aluminum, custom built to our tank and, our, and to our sump. So that way when, when it does get here, we'll have a video. I'll show you how, how it all puts together and I'll give you a breakdown on the pricing of it. The main problem is when we talk about location, we also need to make sure that your floor is level. It's important for these tanks to be level because if we have one point of the glass that's receiving more pressure than any, any other places, it's more likely to crack, break, and even leak. Um, and it's just a, a huge part of making sure that your tank lasts 
years and years and years in the future. So we found out that the floor we will initially be putting it on and where we'll move it to in the warehouse is not level. So we got special casters that are called leveling casters specifically designed to allow a, a couple inch variance on each corner of the tank to be able to make sure that the tank is absolutely perfectly level. The other thing we did, we got a, an Eclipse Ghost Overflow in the bean animal style. We prefer the bean animal style due to redundancy. So when we have the sump down here in the bottom of the stand, we'll run all three lines into the sump and we'll go over an entire video on plumbing. We have, we'll have a, a dual return line for redundancy. One line will be just a return line and we'll have a second line that also runs a manifold in case we want to add extra equipment in the future. So that may be a reactor of sorts, a skimmer of sorts, or it could just simply be a way to recirculate a little bit more of the water back into the, the, into the refugium so that we have even more turnover on, on that water in the nutrient cycle. The other thing that we have is we're building a specialized light stand and we'll be using two of the AI Prime 16 HD, brand new ones that just came out early or late last year. We'll also be using a T5 fixture with four bulbs that runs the entire 48 inches of the tank. We're doing this because we think that based on the livestock that we have, we'll have a very wide range and we'll be able to actually really particularly make a lighter side of the tank, a darker side of the tank, and adjust the schedules accordingly. And the T5s are also to help disperse the shimmer and that disco ball effect that the LEDs create and create an even more uniform par and per level. Now we also have the flow set up. So we're going to have, if you haven't noticed, we're not all about using brand new technology. We like to keep it simple and use what we can get our hands on. So we're using JBO. We're having the knockoff of the gyro, the JBO um, version that will have a return or not a return of wave pump at the very bottom of the tank to keep, keep make sure that the detritus is keeping in suspension and going out through the, um, through the drain lines. So that will be blowing across the entire bottom of the tank. All the frag racks will be individually sorted so they can be pulled out, adjusted. We can work with them and move them between tanks as needed, as well as keep the bottom of the tank clean. That gives you a really good summary of what we're looking at here for our build. It seems simple now. It will get more complicated, but this is how we plan out all our tanks. We've looked at with the requirements for our livestock. We've looked at the requirements for the location we're at. We also have looked at the requirements for the nutrient removal. And that's all encompassing of what we have right here. One thing I did forget to mention, we will have a horticulture bulb or LED lighting system over the, over the fuge. That's specifically designed to grow vegetation. And it won't be a Kessel, it won't be anything that you guys have seen before, I think, but it will be our recommendation and what we use on all of our individual fuges. We're really thankful that you guys decided to join us for this first video episode. We hope you like it. Like, subscribe, share, tell all your friends about it, and we're going to keep put putting out these videos just for you guys. Next video, we're going to be talking about some spe more specific things in the tank. We're going to have a couple unboxings throughout the week. And we're going to take a look at those new 16 HD primes that the, the Aqua Illumination has sent us. Hope you guys have a wonderful week. See you next time. <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. Yeah, I, I can roll with it. I can roll with it. You're going to have to edit it. Yeah, this is all going to be.